So sometimes standard tips just won't cut it and you need the weird, wonderful, and unsung advice that no one ever talks about. And that's what I'm here to tell you about today here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we're in Disneyland this time, friends. That's right, I just got back from the realm that Walt Disney himself once deemed as the happiest place on Earth, which, hey, can't argue with the main man, right? And while I was in Disneyland, I stumbled across some situations that made me go, hmm, never really thought about how I'd navigate this before, but that's gonna be really important to keep in mind from here on out. So, you know I always do this. Whenever I go to a Disney park, I always write down on my little notes app everything I need to tell you about. So I jotted all my Disneyland epiphanies down, and now I'm here to pass them on to you. So some of them are going to be super valuable, I think. Some of them are just going to be like, AJ, you're a weirdo. So here we go. I'm starting with the most critical one because this could be very important, and that is a missing bathroom. If you got someone in your group that's got an impatient bladder, like me, then this is the info you need to know. So I went to dine at the Riverbell Terrace in Frontierland, which is lovely. It has a very, very, very good burnt ends brisket grilled cheese. It's got some killer loaded tots, and it's got some really, really dry monkey bread that I don't recommend, but we'll get to that later. Right now, it's a cute and casual table service restaurant with Southern cuisine, pastel colored accents, wrought iron fencing, and a nice view of the rivers of America, especially if you're dining at one of their umbrella tables outside, which I was. Now, some of you remember that Riverbell Terrace wasn't always a table service restaurant. It actually for a very long time was a counter service restaurant. So surprise, there is no bathroom here. None. Now, you guys know I go through Diet Coke like water and I drink a lot of Diet Coke. And so when I needed a restroom, I was honestly surprised to be told, yeah, you either have to go all the way over to the Tiki Juice Bar in Adventureland, which means you have to navigate that really, really horrible little bottleneck in Adventureland, or you need to go all the way over to Rancho Del Zocalo. So what do you do if you really have to go? Well, you're out of luck. You just basically got to choose one way or the other. I think I would recommend Rancho Rancho Del Zocalo, since I decided to do right across from the Tiki Juice Bar, and that was a very, very difficult navigation to get there from the outside tables of Riverbell Terrace. So heads up on that, my friends. Good to be aware. All right, epiphany number two. Let's keep talking about Adventureland. There are many parts about Disneyland that I love more than Disney World. More on that soon. But there are also times when I'm at Disneyland missing some of my tried and true favorites at Disney World. For instance, I like Aloha Isle in Magic Kingdom better than Tropical Hideaway in Disneyland. Sort of. I love Tropical Hideaway in terms of the actual operation. It's much bigger. It's much better. There's tons of seating. It makes a lot more sense in terms of how you order and that whole situation. There are also more savory snack items and of course the ever entertaining Rosita whose puns give the Jungle Cruise skippers a run for their money sometimes. Now the better Dole Whip and cool treat menu items are over at Aloha Isle in Magic Kingdom's Adventureland unfortunately. There are fewer flavors offered at Tropical Hideaway and fewer flavor combos as such. You're pretty much limited to the traditional pineapple, mango, or watermelon right now though the watermelon is pretty exciting I gotta admit. They don't have that at Aloha Isle but they do have like coconut and raspberry and I don't know I think it's just a better choice over at Aloha Isle. However, I do highly recommend grabbing one of those bao buns or a sweet or savory lumpia for a savory afternoon snack. Now, epiphany three, sometimes we've got better attraction options. So Disney World might have some better Dole Whip flavors and dessert options, but some of Disney World's rides and shows don't hold a candle to what Disneyland has to offer, at least in my opinion. Case in point, Radiator Springs Racers in Disney California Adventure is Test Track's superior younger cousin. Both rides use the same slot car ride system, meaning the powered vehicles are guided by actual slots along the track. Both rides also use a similar formula. Your vehicle will take a sudden sharp turn, slam on the brakes, press the pedal to the metal at the ride's climax. However, Test Track is all about designing a virtual car concept and taking it for a spin on the Test Track. While Radiator Springs Racers takes you on a journey with characters like Lightning McQueen and Mater, Sally, and the rest of the Radiator Springs crew to get you all ready for your big race. Unlike Test Track, where you're virtually racing your custom designed cars against other people in your vehicle, at Radiator Springs, you get to compete in an actual physical race where the winner is different every single time. By the way, I don't think I've ever won this race and I still love this ride. Plus, Radiator Springs 
Racers also has a couple of different show buildings you could potentially coast through. You might get a brand new set of wheels thanks to Luigi or get a fresh paint job thanks to Ramon. So two different options there. Radiator Springs Racers gets you invested in the action. And when I drive past that waterfall at the beginning, chills every time with that music from the movie. Incredible. That reveal along with the swelling music is glorious and we just want to live there. So obviously better than Test Track, right? If you disagree, please let me know in the comments because we're going to have to have some conversations. Then you've got the Battle of the Space Mountains in both Disneyland and Magic Kingdom. So both Disneyland Space Mountain and Space Mountain in Disney World have overlays from time to time. Disney World's real only overlay is that Halloween overlay, which is where they just turn all the lights out and it's just pitch black in there, which is scary. But over at Disneyland, you have the option of riding Hyperspace Mountain, which is what's there right now, and potentially Ghost Galaxy, which is truly terrifying. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and tell you my epiphany is that Hyperspace Mountain is the best version of Space Mountain. Again, in my opinion, I like the traditional Space Mountain, but when you add some Star Wars starships here and a battle with an interstellar demon there, an epic Star Wars score combined with jumps into light speed, yeah, it's a recipe for awesome. Plus you can sit next to your travel buddy on the Disneyland version instead of having to sit in front or behind them like you do in Magic Kingdom. Not really a pro or con, I guess, but it might be a pro if you've got a nervous rider who'd feel much better sitting next to someone during this dark coaster ride. And I must also say Disneyland's Fantasmic show currently has a solid edge over the non-existent Fantasmic in Hollywood Studios. Why? Because of the pirate ship alone. That Columbia sailing ship turns into a pirate ship for Fantasmic and it is truly, truly incredible. It doesn't matter how tired I am, I am wide awake when that massive ship comes into view. Now, I could feel differently once Fantasmic in Hollywood Studios finally reopens, considering they'll be adding some new scenes, including characters like Mulan and Elsa, Moana and Aladdin, giving the classic Pocahontas scene an overhaul and updating the show with some more advanced technology. But the jury is still out right now. Fantasmic at Disneyland is truly incredible. Okay, Epiphany 4, Busy Nights. Okay, I know what you're really wanting to know here. How are those Disneyland crowd levels and what can you expect to see when you visit? Well, I noticed a pattern during that weekend that I was in the parks and this actually came from my social media manager, Corinne, who is very, very, very smart about these things. The nights were hustling and bustling while the days were really, really manageable in Disneyland. Does this make sense? Of course it makes sense. On the Friday of my visit, crowd levels were super light, but picked up by the evening and Saturday was a little busier, sure, but the crowds definitely didn't pick up until midday. So what's the deal? Here's the deal. Disneyland is a locals park. Disney World is a destination park. So people who usually go to Disneyland, well, they're at work or school or doing errands or getting a coffee with a friend. Disneyland is a local center park. So the more frequent visitors have a season pass, meaning they'll just jump over for the evening, grab a drink, ride a ride, do some shopping and call it good. So if you're visiting from out of town, plan to get up and around to hit up your must-do rides in the morning before the influx of locals come over to hang out. It's definitely, definitely Definitely easier to get everything done in the morning and during the week. Epiphany 5, let's talk Genie Plus. I've talked a lot about how Disney Genie Plus works over in Orlando, and if you want to learn more about this premium queue bypassing service, you can check out some of our updated DFB posts, which I'll link down in the description. But what about Anaheim? What's going on over there? Well, booking ride times with Genie Plus Lightning Lane entrances and individual attraction selections was really easy, plain and simple. Disneyland only has 12 Genie Plus rides to choose from, and DCA has seven. That's compared to Disney World's 40 plus. They've also got three individual attraction selections, including Rise of the Resistance, Radiator Springs Racers, and Web Slingers. And although you'd think having fewer rides to choose from rather than the whopping 40 plus attractions you've got in Disney World would make your reservation options more limited and therefore harder to snag, it really doesn't. I actually found myself having to set alarms to go back and recheck Genie Plus to see if the ride that I wanted to ride was now in a late enough window for me to actually want to ride it. Because I would get to the park and I would ride a couple things and then I didn't want to ride like Hyperspace Mountain, for example, until 2 or 3 p.m. because I had a lunch reservation, but it didn't get down to 2 or 3 p.m. on the Lightning Lane option until much later in the day than I expected. So that was pretty unprecedented, not something I'm used to in Disney World at all, where everything sort of just sells out pretty quickly. And if you buy Genie Plus at noon, you're pretty much into the 9, 10 p.m. range for your Lightning Lanes at that point, most of the time. So again, this goes back to Disneyland being a local-centric park. Because locals can jump into the parks and hit up the rides when the mood's 
strikes, they're not really playing the whole cutthroat game of trying to collect as many Genie Plus rides as they can in a day before they have to go back home. Because you know what? They can come back next weekend <laughs> and ride whatever they didn't ride. So all in all, Disneyland just feels a lot more laid back than Disney World right now. And that's the vibe I have been missing a lot. But it should be noted that prices for Lightning Lanes in Disneyland are more expensive than in Disney World. So budget accordingly. While Genie Plus costs $15 per person per day in Disney World, it costs $20 per person per day in Disneyland. Okay, Epiphany 6, Genie Loophole. Now, here's a tricky little difference between Disney World's individual Lightning Lane entrances and Disneyland's. It's all got to do with location, location, location. While guests staying at a Disney World resort can make Lightning Lane reservations for those most high-in-demand attractions starting at 7 a.m. from the comfort of their hotel room, guests in Disneyland have to wait to make their first individual entrance purchase once they've entered the park. But I discovered a cool hack to that system. If you take the monorail into Disneyland, you're technically in the park as soon as you scan in. Even if the monorail hasn't shown up yet. So you can start scrolling and book your individual entrance and your Genie Plus lightning lanes on your way in. Don't think harder, think smarter. And Epiphany 7, chocolate popcorn. Okay, love me a good snack controversy. May I ask why chocolate popcorn isn't available at both Katsakas in Disneyland and Hollywood Studios? Like, why is the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Florida stuck with weird outpost mix? Okay, refocusing. Chocolate popcorn, an original at Katsakas Kettle in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland, can now be found at multiple kiosks around Batu. We knew this, but I asked a couple of questions of cast members while I was there, and they promised me that chocolate popcorn could always be found at these kiosks around Batu, you know, where you can get your thermal detonator soda pops and stuff, even if they don't have chocolate popcorn at Katsakas. So though the current outpost mix at Katsakas in Disneyland is a chocolate caramel mix, they've also got cheddar for a more savory option. The straight chocolate can only be found at kiosks right now. So what did I do? I got the chocolate caramel and the cheddar and mixed them together for a sweet and salty popcorn mix done right. The cast members wouldn't mix them for me, but they did kindly give me another bag so I can combine them myself. And of course, I got some chocolate popcorn corn for the road. Epiphany 8, I'm just gonna say it, Cars Land is in desperate need of a refurb. Don't worry, this isn't an AJ Soapbox rant. I never do that. It applies to you too. The last time I went to Cars Land, everything was pretty bright and vibrant and lively, but this time everything is really starting to look kind of tired and faded. And it kind of felt a little bit like, should I say it? Kind of like a Six Flags. Now, it's hard for me to say because I really love this section of Disney California Adventure. It's probably my favorite part of Disney California Adventure. But I mean, I have manicures I really like too, but I know when the polish starts chipping, it's time to get them a touch up, right? Same goes for Cars Land. This section of DCA has been open since 2012, and that's 10 years ago. Feeling old yet? Yeah. And its wear and tear is definitely showing its age. The signs are fading, the ride colors are fading, the cozy cones are fading, and I even noticed some of the taillight flowers broken and busted, which made me all sad. So what's this got to do with you and your upcoming DCA trip? Well, don't just hit up Cars Land during the day. Make sure to return when the sun has set and the mood lighting has switched over. Though the daytime exposes the rougher side, of this once vibrant land, the night vibes are still pretty immaculate with stringed lights above the road and piped in 50s tunes. Oh, and Radiator Springs Racers, still a blast. Just need some TLC. And don't forget, if you haven't watched our other Disneyland videos, that street light in Radiator Springs, it really is just a little bit longer on the third blink. Okay, Epiphany 9, soup and sourdough bread bowls. Bread is like a really important part of my Disneyland experience in history. My first memories of Disneyland bread are of the cornbread there, which is super sweet and basically it's a dessert and that's how cornbread should be. No jalapenos or savoriness and you can go ahead and argue with me in the comments on that too. But there's so much more to bread in Disneyland from epic funnel cakes and churros to the quintessential handmade corn dogs that are literally the best on earth. And one of my favorite versions of Disneyland bread is the made on site boudin sourdough bread bowls. So Disney World has a few bread bowls now, but they're not made on site and they don't hold a candle to these fresh balls of shapely dough, all crusty and brand new. My favorite place to get these is at Pacific Wharf Cafe in Disney California Adventure, but on this Disneyland visit, I went old school and decided to revisit French Market in New Orleans Square in Disneyland, and to my delight, they were still serving my favorite menu item, corn chowder in a bread bowl. So I mobile ordered it, which meant that it came in a bag and not with the classic bread top shaped into Mickey ears on the bread bowl. So I did it myself. Yes, I'm definitely a high maintenance stickler for recreating my core memories. And I sat and watched the Columbia and Riverboat float by, listened to a podcast and ate my corn chowder. And honestly, it was probably the most peaceful I felt in like months and months. So highly recommend. 
And Epiphany 10, speaking of, let's talk about that bread baking and the Boudin Bakery walkthrough factory. That's right. It is back open in Disney California Adventure, my friends. Did you know there was a whole bread bakery in Disney California Adventure and you can walk through it and get free bread? That's right. You start this whole thing with free bread. There's a fabulous cast member sitting there passing out free slices of this amazing sourdough bread. Then you can watch the process behind glass. Now, my favorite part of this was seeing how the Mickey bread is made. You've all seen the Mickey sourdough bread in Disneyland, right? It's super adorable. But until I saw how it was made, I never realized I didn't know how it was made. So the dough is hand shaped and then settled under a press that punches out the shape of Mickey. There are a few little extra eyes that are pulled out and placed on his eyes and nose to build up those features. And then he's ready for the oven. Now you can buy your own Mickey bread right outside. And sometimes they have seasonal bread shapes like vampire Mickey. So definitely check that out. But I'm so glad that this bakery tour is back open. It's so much fun. It's just one of those extra bonuses in a Disney park that you don't even know is there. It's like the Stave Church or the Morocco Gallery in Epcot. That's just like, this is so cool. <laughs> How did I never know this was there, right? Anyway, I'm glad it's back open. I hope you get to walk through it soon. And there you have it, Disneyland tips in all their wonderfully bizarre and quirky finest. Planning a trip to Disneyland has a lot of similarities to planning a trip to Disney World, but a trip to Cali and a trip to Florida is not one size fits all. So make sure to study up ahead of time. Check out our Disneyland news sections on our DFB website for all the latest Disneyland and Disney California adventure updates. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.